Innovation is one of the main and most influential factors when seeking success in developing or creating something new within any industry. In the case of the transportation world, innovation has also become the fundamental pillar for solving many problems, such as sensitive or indivisible loads. However, this same factor can work against us when we try to abuse it too much, especially in cases where, beyond achieving efficiency and optimization, new problems arise. Sadly, this is the premise surrounding the Steinwinter Supercargo, whose ambitions to revolutionize transportation were as grand as its name. Steinwinter is a German automotive company based in Stuttgart, whose operations began in 1969, initially manufacturing cars under Fiat license. Although over the years the company ceased mass production lines, they still specialize in manufacturing special vehicles, only on demand. What truly stands out about this brand is not only the relative exclusivity of its production or some of the striking models they manufactured in their prime, but the development of one of the most extravagant and eye-catching concepts in the heavy transportation world ever seen. Although it was built only as a prototype, its striking design stood out, which can still be seen in airport service trucks today. Known as the Steinwinter Supercargo, its design was conceived during the 1970s, although its construction took place several years later. Presented at the Frankfurt Motor Show in 1983, it envisioned a concept in which the transport vehicle remained beneath the trailer itself, aiming not to affect the total length of the load and thus enabling the transportation of more volume completely legally. This highly unusual design allowed for the transport of a cargo area 18 meters long, resulting in a total volume of 150 cubic meters, ensuring an economic increase of 20 to 50 percent, depending on the manner of use. In addition to this, it aimed to improve fuel economy thanks to its studied aerodynamics and offer unmatched versatility as it was destined as a modular platform that could accommodate various cargo variants. In this regard, the supercargo was manufactured with the idea of integrating different specialized modules for specific purposes. Specifically, it could pull a conventional trailer, but it could also carry a shipping container on top of itself. Similarly, a module was designed to serve as a tourist bus, consisting basically of a trailer with windows on the sides and rows of seats. Regarding the technical qualities of this prototype, it was based on a Mercedes-Benz chassis, consisting of a cabin 6.5 meters long and barely 1.17 meters high, being lower than many cars and surprisingly only 15 centimeters taller than the legendary Ford GT40. The reason was to stay low enough to avoid the trailer having to be modified or adapted, thus achieving not having to sacrifice the great versatility for which it was proposed. In terms of engine, it featured an 8-cylinder Daimler-Benz OM442 engine with 400 horsepower and 2,100 newton meters of torque, paired with a 16-speed manual transmission. However, a unique feature of this model is that the engine compartment was perfectly adapted to receive the mechanical solution from any U.S. manufacturer, such as Cummings, as deemed appropriate by the final buyer. It also equipped independent air suspension, ABS brakes, and many other advanced features for its time. If you've reached this point in the video and enjoyed it, we would greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. Until that moment, everything seemed positive. The reception of this new concept was good. And to top it off, the German authorities responsible for transportation approved up to four different versions of use for this model, from articulated trains to passenger buses. Because of this, the manufactured prototype toured Europe and later the United States in search of potential clients. Unfortunately, problems did not take long to arrive, and despite the fact that its low-profile design would mean savings in operating costs, being in strong point the ability to carry larger loads without breaking dimension regulations, this same characteristic of keeping the cabin under the trailer offered severely limited visibility, something that truckers and people who tested it did not like at all. 
In addition to this, the engineers behind the development of the unit found it impossible to find a balance point to perfect its driving, as it had a great tendency to understeer. Furthermore, durability was a very important consideration as the reliability of the model didn't guarantee the million miles required by regulations due to serious overheating problems. The consequences were disastrous, leading the main companies supporting the project, including Mercedes-Benz, to withdraw their support and funding. Interestingly, the only model manufactured, Supercargo, made some significant appearances in television series, such as The Highwayman, where it was radically modified in terms of aesthetics. Although its whereabouts and condition remained unknown for many years afterward, some internet users claim that this peculiar truck is preserved somewhere in Germany, with videos emerging showing its current state. Similarly, it's important to note that although innovative for its time, as mentioned earlier, this low cabin truck design is widely used at airports for aircraft refurbishment. Even today, driven significantly by the new trends in electrification and autonomous driving, companies like Volvo have launched their own versions very similar to that of this 1980s prototype. While the differences are quite clear and the focus is entirely different, it's peculiar that they have such a similar design. In Volvo's case, with their prototype called Vera, it focuses more on handling large cargo volumes in logistic centers, such as ports. Although innovation is one of the most important factors when wanting to develop something in any industrial field, it can often be counterproductive when the development in question brings more problems than benefits. While the initial concept of the supercargo was revolutionary and addressed the need to legally carry more cargo, the very specific failures ultimately caused it to sabotage itself. But tell us, what do you think of this idea of a cabin under the trailer for heavy transport? Do you think it could be used again today? We'll read your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it and want more similar content, please subscribe to our channel. We also invite you to visit our secondary channel, Gear Unlimited, where you'll find a wide variety of topics. We appreciate your support and interest. Keep on trucking and stay tuned for more.